Hi guys. So today on the bench we have something that is quite rare. Um, rare in that I could not find pretty much no information at all on this item. This is a Wharfdale XP cassette deck and it uh, is from 1974. Um, it was introduced by Rank Audio Visual um, who took over um, Wharfdale Limited in 1958. So um, this is uh, from 1974, quite an old cassette deck, but um, I just, I'm surprised at how uh, little information there is about this. Um, now, from what I have read, it's possible that Nakamichi made this cassette deck. Nakamichi were the OEM manufacturers for a number of cassette decks um, around that time um, for other other manufacturers. I think they did one for Fisher, one for Goodman's. They certainly did a couple for Wharfdale. Um, I can't guarantee that this is a Nakamichi deck, but it certainly has similarities um, in the way it looks um, and the features that um, some of the Nakamichi decks at the time had. Um, now, I don't normally show you the box that things come in, but because this is rare and because it actually comes in its original box, I thought you might like to see it. Um, and again, the box is uh, the box is in good condition. I, I've not opened this yet. Um, I have bought it knowing that there's a couple of problems. Um, I know that the belts are probably bad in it because the um, fast forward and rewind don't work according to the seller. And also the cassette door itself, it's a top loading cassette deck. This one, the door, uh, there's something wrong with that. It doesn't close. Um, so let me get it out the box and we will uh, take a look. So original packing in the box, which is good. Uh, even comes with the instruction booklet too. And also a cable. I'm not sure if this is the original cable. It feels quite old. <laughs> the, the feel that the rubber gets on these cables when it gets a bit old, a bit crusty. Uh, it does feel vintage cable, but um, I'm not sure about that. Okay, I'll clear the box out of the way and uh, we'll get this opened up. So here's our first look at it. And it is in great condition. Um, we've got the door not closing, but uh, I knew about that. But top of this, yeah, it's a bit grubby, but um, it's uh, it's in really good condition. There's no damage as far as I can tell. So this is um, for 1974. This is uh, it's kind of cutting edge, um, especially with the chrome. It's got a chrome button here. Um, and I think I'm right in saying that um, chrome tapes were only released in 1974. Um, so for this deck to have that on there, this must have been one of the first ones. We've got uh, Dolby B, noise reduction. Of course, that was around for a long time. Um, this, is, um, this has been around for a, way before this deck, but uh, the chrome, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a, a new feature for that year. Um, tape run light for you meters, the old Wharfdale logo there, made in Japan of course, sticker still on there, and uh, we'll, we need to open it up and take a look at this, but that's what we'll do is just plug it in first, and we'll, uh, we'll just see what it does or does not do. Tape. Oh, let's see if it powers up first. Hmm. Don't know if you can hear that, but the capstan's making uh, quite a racket. That's possibly the uh, possibly the belts slipping. Uh, quietens down when you press play. And you can see that tape run light there flashing. It's kind of 
looks as though it's cycling. There must be a, a disc, I think, in front of that bulb, making it look as though it's uh, it's actually moving. That's quite nice. Okay, let's get a tape in here. Well, there's no speakers built into here, of course, but uh, we can get some headphones in there, check that it's working. I don't think the tape, I don't think there's anything missing on here. Uh, oh yeah, it still ejects. Uh, some, some of these cassette lids, or most of them in fact, have the, the slide to put the tape in like that and then the whole thing closes down. I don't think there's anything missing here. I think um, you're meant to put the tape in like this and then snap the door down. Um, I don't know because I haven't seen any before, but uh, I think that's the way it should work. Okay, so the play seems to work. Yeah, fast forward isn't. Rewind isn't. It is playing and there is some level on the meters. Let me just grab some headphones. Just see if there's any audio output. Oh, there is. Don't know if you can hear that. Okay. Well, so far so good, I think. What we'll do is let's open it up and uh, let's take a look inside. So this case, looking around it, we've got uh, wood. Wooden case, a lot of uh, electrical items were made with wooden cabinets from this age. I remember when I was growing up, uh, our family had wooden TV sets. And uh, yeah, this is no exception. I have wooden to there as well, look at that. Look at the back, line in, line out. Obviously the same, but under five pinned in. Uh, what have we got? There's no date actually written on here, but um, Serial number 3770, don't know how many were made. Again, uh, I just, I can't find any information on this, so uh, this is uh, the first time I've seen one of these. Right, the only screws I can see are on the bottom. So let's, let's try these. Feels like a nut and bolt just slipping around. I don't think that's the screws. It must be these ones. take all these out. I don't know what this grill's for. There's a, a fan in there. I wouldn't have thought there was a fan. Maybe it's just... Um, some airflow. As you can see. Okay. Okay, these belts were. Uh, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure these belts were the cause of the noise. They are pretty crusty. I've got a pack of um, belts, various sizes, so I will try those. It doesn't really matter um, with with equipment like this, with the large wheels and lots of clearance. You can you can pretty much just use uh, any belt that um, that is a similar size. Um, when you when you're working on the small 
personal stereos and very small ones, the tolerances are a lot smaller and the belts have got to go through little gaps. So uh, you do have to use the right one, but um, something this size and age, it's, uh, it doesn't really matter. Anything's going to be better than these ones. In fact, let's just pull that off. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, bad belts. Okay, so that's one thing to look at. Uh, the cassette door, that was the other thing. So let's, let's have a look. There's our eject button. So this piece here, that's moving down. This what pops the tape out from inside. The door has a little catch on it. Actually, I think I can see what it is. So let me just get a light just one second. So I don't know if you can see there, but that that piece of metal there, when you push the eject, it doesn't move. And when you push the door in, it doesn't move. But if you look, the plastic um, sort of hook on the door, I guess is meant to uh, fit in line with this, but it's it's all very, it's dusty and it's all the grease has gone hard. Let me see if I can move this. Yeah, so that that's what locks it in. So it ejects opens the door, but it doesn't spring back. So I'm guessing that that just needs re-greasing or maybe the spring has, has broken somewhere. I'll have to get that um, opened up a bit more, get the deck out. Let's have a little look around. Let me just take this uh, foil off. You can have a look at the circuit. Like I said, I mean, it's. Uh, I'd like to just fix this, but I think it's worth having a look on video because um, it might be the last time anyone gets to see one. Um, I literally cannot find any videos of this. So all through hole, of course. It smells, you can see a vintage circuit board smell. just a mass of shielded cables under here running from all the switches back to the circuitry. What else have we got? Ah, I spy something which is not good. Right there. That, unless I'm mistaken, is a reefer capacitor. These are notorious for uh, going bang literally in these uh, in these old machines. I should have checked that before I powered it up. Really, actually, it's it's. I don't know if you can. I'll take a picture with my uh, with my camera and superimpose it onto this so you can see properly. But there's a there is a crack in there, uh, and that's what happens with these reefer capacitors. They they the the, the plastic case becomes brittle and cracks, uh, and then moisture condensation, damp environment that gets into the capacitor and. Uh, that's what causes them to so violently uh, fail. Just looks like the one X-Class capacitor. So X-Class is um, the safety capacitors and suppression capacitors, but X-Class is directly between the incoming main supply. So it'll be between the neutral and the live. If it was a Y-Class, then it's between the line and earth. But uh, this one is a is an X. You can see it written on there. What size is it? 0 0.1 microfarads. So I'm sure I've got one of those somewhere. Maybe on an old board actually. So I'll uh, I'll have to go and unsolder that. But I will put a picture of that up for you. Um, anything else interesting? Quite a heavy mechanism, quite a large flywheel on the back of that capstan. But it is in really good uh, condition, even inside. It's uh, it's pretty clean. There is dust on the mechanism, of course, there, but that's only to be expected.
Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'll unsolder that capacitor, get that new capacitor in, because um, I don't want to power it up again until that's done. And then I will uh, take a look at the, um, the eject mechanism. As far as I know, they're the only two faults. Uh, oh, the belts as well. So capacitor, eject button, belts. I'll get those done. Um, and then I'll probably wrap up the video with, uh, with a little demo of it. Maybe I'll try and get some speakers attached to it and you can uh, hear what it sounds like. But uh, yeah, this is uh, it's quite, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, it's in better condition than I was uh, expecting. Just move this main circuit up and out the way so I can get to the, uh, the capacitor. And the amount of electrolytic capacitors on here is uh, is crazy. Look at them all. There must be dozens on there. Not many integrated circuits. See one down here. Oh, it's a Dolby one. And that one's a Dolby one. I think that's it. There's, only, there's two integrated circuits, and they're both the uh, the Dolby. Noise reduction. This is the uh, sort of reefer capacitor on a board all of its own. Look, so mains in, mains out. The capacitor. That's all that uh, all this board is for. So I will get that taken out and uh, get that replaced. Still some grease under there on the end of the capstan. I will replace that though. Put some new grease on there. So we can uh, see this belt. So let me just have a look in my belts and see what I've got that's a similar size. Okay, I think I've found one that's similar. So I think it went round this idler, didn't it? Like that. Yeah, that's that's fine, that belt. I'll just find another one for the, the, I guess this is the counter. So let me have a quick look. Nope, too big. That'll do. Oh, well, I need some more grease for that. So I've got the new X-Class capacitor installed. I, uh, I had to buy some of these. I thought I had an old one from an old board, which um, normally got loads of old boards, but uh, uh, I didn't have any with the capacitor on, so I've ordered this one. It's actually twice the capacitance of the original. Um, original was 0.1 microfarad. This is 0.22. Um, so that can only be better. Um, one thing on here um, I just wanted to show you, which I, I think is good. Um, this 
main circuit board here, it's split into two sections, left channel and right channel. Um, and you don't normally only see that in very high-end um, audio equipment. And uh, it's pretty much a mirror image, this side and this side, left and right channels. So it makes the separation uh, of those channels just all the better. Um, even the, see these long um, connectors here, there's two of them on the other side. This is the record play uh, switch over. So when you press record, this mechanical bar moves over and presses a long um, changeover switch here. And the way that switch is, it's, it's basically in pairs, it might be pairs or it might be th groups of three um, terminals all the way along. And instead of being on this pair and this pair and this pair and this pair, then you press the switch in and it switches over to the other pair. So it's a, it's a long changeover switch. And you see this quite often in old uh, cassette decks. Um, so there's two separate ones. Um, normally you just have one and all channels go into that same switch, but again, it's, uh, it's separated on here. So I do like that. Um, so what I've done is I've gone through this. Um, I've serviced the deck, um, cleaned off the old grease. And the way I do that uh, on these devices is some IPA and some cotton buds. And I will use that to clean off the old grease because the old grease, when it gets dust with it, um, it just becomes like a hard paste and uh, doesn't perform anymore. So you need to rub all that off with the uh, IPA. And then I just put some new grease on there. Um, it doesn't really matter what the grease is. I actually use uh, this stuff, which um, this is uh, from a car shop, a uh, car uh, maintenance place. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just it's just grease. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything special. Um, I would say that it needs to be quite thick. Um, you know, if you use a very thin oil, um, like a light oil or WD-40 type spray, something like that, it's, it's not going to last. You know, it will work for um, a short time, but then it will uh, it will just uh, not, not work in time. And of course, it can also move around. So you don't want it to, when you've got these uh, mechanisms here, there are there are parts which need to be greased, you know, like the uh, like the, the metal parts that are sliding here. But then right next to that, you've got something like this wheel here, which has a rubber a rubber uh, edge to it, and that touches touches this wheel, and you don't want grease on there. So if you have a, a light oil, then because it's it's uh, very thin and it can uh, it can move around, then it'll it'll get on all the components. So yeah, just just use a thick grease uh, for that. So yeah, I've, I've gone through the deck, I've serviced that. Um, I have also put deoxit um, on all the connectors. So this uh, this switch here, this changeover connector, I've put deoxit on there. The slider switches on the other side, all the switches, and um, put some deoxid in there. Uh, what else? Um, the eject mechanism is now working. So this lever here this this big one was working before but you probably won't be able to see there let me just bring the light in so this silver part at the bottom this is the one that was sticking before and uh, that's now moving fine so the door closes no problem um so yeah capacitor the deck servicing. The only thing I've got left to do is the uh, cassette heads. I haven't cleaned those yet. So I'll put this uh, shield back on. This is uh, going to go on the back of the circuit. Put the case back together, turn it over, and then we'll, uh, we'll just clean those heads off and then we'll see what it sounds like. Right, apologies. I was going to show you the head cleaning on this deck. Um, but unfortunately, that particular video clip um, got corrupted. It uh, it didn't survive at the end, so I don't know what happened to that. Um, but that was the only thing left to do on this deck. Um, all the other bits are sorted. The eject button is now working. I have cleaned all of these um, switches and contacts with some contact cleaner, some deoxit. Um, the fast forward and rewind now work. Um, the problem with that, when I was servicing the deck when I was oiling it. Um, the, there's a little cam in the center which basically pivots either side. It's got a 
plastic gear on it and it um, depending on whether you fast forward and rewind it literally moves um, just left and right like this now that was just really stiff again it's the grease um, I had to just lift that up um, clean off the the bad grease underneath put some more grease down drop it down uh, I mean that's all these decks need really uh, unless something's broken Fast forward and rewind are fine now. Um, I've also recorded um, something. So on this chrome tape that I've got, um, I've made a recording and I'm going to play that now. And it sounds really good. I'm really surprised uh, at how good this deck sounds from 1974. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's fully working now and um, it's in great condition. This rosewood case is undamaged. There's no physical damage anywhere. All the switches work. There's no crackles anywhere. Uh, on the sliders when you're moving them and yeah it's uh, it's really good so what I'll do is I'll just leave you um, with a minute or so of the sound quality of this device um, again it's a it's chrome tape it was recorded with the Dolby on um, so it's as good as this deck can get and thanks for watching